Hello friends, uh, welcome to my channel. Let's have a look at problem 2334 together. Subarray with elements greater than varying threshold. Uh, for this problem, we are going to share a stack-based solution. First, I'll look at the statement and analyze the problem. And uh, then we are going to walk through an example with detail and then share the code. First, let's look at the statement. Uh, we are given an integer array called nums and an integer threshold. So we are required to find an, any subarray of nums of length k such that every element in the subarray is greater than threshold over k. Uh, this is the key point in this problem. So we are going to return the size of any such subarray. If there is no such subarray, return negative 1. So the next paragraph specifies what's a subarray. A subarray is a contiguous non-empty sequence of elements within an array. So with that said, let's look at the examples. So in example 1, the threshold value is 6 and the output is 3. So here 3 is the size or length of the corresponding subarray. And in the explanation, it specifies the subarray which is 3, 4, 3. Uh, it has length 3. And the 3, mm, so divided, uh, so if we consider 6 over 3, that is 2. So every element in 3, 4, 3 is greater than 2. So the output is 3 in example 1. And in example 2, the threshold value is 7. So the output is 1. And the corresponding subarray is 8. So this is a single element subarray. Its length is 1. So 8 is greater than 7 over 1. Right? So with that said, let's look at the constraints about, of this problem. So the length of the array nums is greater or equal than 1, which tells it's not empty. And less or equal than uh, or equal to uh, 10 to the power of 5. This is a large number. So secondly, the range of nums elements and the threshold value is between 1 and 10 to the power 9. So with that said, let's look at the analysis for this problem. So uh, we uh, can consider a such subarray. Let's call it S. So with uh, length k. So the problem statement is actually says, so we require every element, let's see y in S is such that y is greater than the threshold value divided by the length. So actually this um, condition itself is not very straightforward to check. So, But this statement or condition is equivalent to seeing that the minimum element in S is greater than the threshold value over the length k. So with this uh, point realized, actually uh, the procedure is very straightforward. The reason is that the threshold value is fixed. The larger k is, the easier the above condition is fulfilled. So with this uh, equivalence relation, we're going to mimic, uh, mimic or uh, propose the following procedure. So first, for each element y in nums, uh, we try to find the longest subarray such that it contains this element y as the smallest element. So here, longest means that we try to enlarge the length around this number as large as possible. So for this step, actually, it's a standard monotonic uh, stack uh, operation. So secondly, we check if this y, because this y is the minimum element in the corresponding subarray. If it greater than the threshold over the length, if so, we just return the uh, length k. So after this loop, if nothing is already returned, we're going to return negative 1 according to the um, as, uh, assumption or the requirement by the problem statement. So this uh, actually finishes the analysis and the procedure. So let's look at a specific example 
to gain the idea. So let's use example one uh, to fix this idea. So in example one, so the threshold value is six, right? So in order to, for each element, see one or three here, uh, for each element in nums, in order to fix or determine the corresponding subarray which contains the element as the minimal elements, we just need to uh, specify the left and the right boundaries. For example, in the i equals zero, we look at the number one. So the corresponding um, index for left and right boundaries are zero and four respectively. Meaning that, so starting from index zero, ending at index four, so this corresponding subarray contains this one, and also this one is the smallest element. Then we are going to check if one is greater than the threshold divided by the length. Uh, it's not, so we continue. So when we look at uh, the index i equals one, the number is three. So the corresponding in uh, boundaries is one and three, meaning that we are looking at one, four, uh, six, uh, three, four, three. So this is the corresponding subarray. So we check if three is greater than six over three. If so, we are going to return. So here is yes. So we return the size three. So up to here, actually, the procedure for this specific example ends. So, but in order to gain more uh, meta information or intuition, let's continue check for the other elements. So when i equals two, we are looking at the number four. So the corresponding index are two and two. In other words, the subarray is four itself with length one. So we check if four is greater than six over one. Uh, it's no, right? So also we let's look at this three. So this three actually equals this three. So the corresponding subarray is the same as the left and the right in, uh, indices or boundaries are the same. So we check three, four, three, and three is greater than six over three. Here is yes, but you know, we already returned in the step when we looking at i equals one. So when i equals four, we are examining one again, right? Similar as we examined the first one, corresponding to index i equals zero. So with that said, actually uh, we are ready to share the code. Um, for the code, let's uh, let me first uh, do some preparations and initializations. So first, I'm going to track the length information for this nums. So this is the routine, and then in order to determine the subarrays corresponding to each number, we're going to determine the left and right boundaries. For this, we are going to do some initialization. So for left is i for i in range i. So this left will store the corresponding left boundaries for each index or equivalent is the corresponding number. Similarly for the right, i for i in range so here is n. Right. n is the length we tracked. So with that said, what we want to do is uh, find the left boundaries and find the right boundaries and then do the check, right? <coughs> so let's first uh, fix the left boundaries. For this, we're going to initialize a stack because as we mentioned, we're going to use the monotonic stack operations. So we're going to determine the left boundary for each number in nums for i in uh, range m. So then we are going to do the standard uh, monotonic stack operation, while loops, right? So while stack. So if stack is not empty, we are going to do some pop operations. So we're going to check if nums, the stack top element is greater or equal than the nums i, right? So we want nums i to be the minimal element in the corresponding subarray. So for this, we're going to do some reset uh, continuously. So basically, we're going to reset with the stack um, top uh, left boundaries. So each time we um, push the left boundaries to be as left as possible, right? So here, notice that we need to set as the boundary, left boundary for the um, top element in the stack, not set 
uh, setting the left eye equals stack pop itself. So this is important. So um, also this is that uh, operation. So we're going to um, append this current index. For example, if the stack is empty at the very beginning. So um, let's see one more thing is for this while loop. So if we exit this while loop, there are two possibilities. Either the stack is empty or the top element in the stack is less than norms i. So this is exactly the stop condition, right? We, because we need norms i to be the minimum elements. So with that said, basically, uh, we, we are going to set the right boundary. Essentially, we just uh, copy this one, do some mod modifications, right? So we are using the same name, uh, it's OK. And then for setting the right boundary, we're going to uh, do it reversely from right to left. So we are ending at the index 0, so we're going to write here negative 1. And the increment is also negative 1, because we are decreasing. So while stack and nums i is greater or, uh, great or equal than nums i, this is correct. No modification is needed. But here, we're going to change it to be right. right? Mm. So this way, uh, we have already set the right boundaries. So now we're going to do the check. So this is actually very routine. So we're going to uh, traverse the nums list. Then the corresponding number is, of course, on nums i. And the corresponding subarray containing this nums i as minimum element has size uh, right i. Uh, minus left i. Don't forget uh, the plus one because right i is the end index and left i is the beginning index, both inclusive. So we are computing the size by the index difference plus one. Then we are going to check the condition. So if uh, um, the nums i is greater than t over this size, right? If so, we are going to return the size. So here t is a threshold value. So I have changed this um, threshold value argument in the original function signature as t for convenience. So if after this loop nothing um, returned, we're going to return negative one, right? So um, this is the full code for this problem. Let's do a simple check for special case. It passes a special case. Um, let's do a generic case check. Yeah, it passes the generic case uh, check. So for this problem, um, here the point, this point, the equivalence is the key. So once we realize the um, equivalence here, so it leads to the following procedure in step two directly. And however, this pro, uh, this solution we provide here is sort of uh, brute force, uh, in the sense that we checked this uh, uh, left boundaries and right boundaries uh, for all the numbers. So actually, uh, in practice, the, uh, the optimal solution uh, shouldn't be like this, because we can stop here, right? So then the corresponding question is, can you improve the solution based on the walkthrough? You know, in, the, in our solution, we walk through all this. And then finally, we do this check and return and three. But in practice, or in um, in the best uh, solution, uh, we can stop here, right? So um, I guess um, with that said, that's the solution and the corresponding solution structure for this problem. Um, you are also welcome to look at other solutions in my playlist for similar questions using uh, monotonic stack method. Thank you very much.